Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at creating iPhone style icons. Now these are the little uh, application icons that you have on an iPhone. We're just going to go through quickly how to create them in Adobe Illustrator so they're a fully vector. You can scale them up, you can scale them down as much as you want and we're going to cover some things that are necessary to do that so we keep them looking good whether or not they're huge or small and the beauty of working in Adobe Illustrator is not only the fact that it's vector but you can then take these size them however you want you can bring them into Photoshop you can bring them wherever you want and you know all of that really doesn't matter because it's vector artwork and it is very nice and clean and crisp regardless of its size so we're gonna create this icon first and then with a couple slight edits we're gonna make it more like the real icon which looks more like the icon has been cut into it like this one right here on the left so we're gonna start with this guy on the right and then edit it to look like the one on the left Step one is going to be to create a new file. So we're going to go File New and just create a new document. You can name it anything you want. The size is going to be, let's say, 600 by 400, just like so. We also just want to come down here and hit Advanced, make sure we're working in RGB color mode. And Raster Effects screen at 72 PPI is fine. So we're going to hit OK now, and we get our new document right here. So the first step, well, I'm going to hit the flyout menu here in the layers panel, and now I'm off screen, but I'm moving down to panel options. Matter of fact, let me come down here to panel options, and the panel options dialog box pops up. I just want to hit other and make the thumbnail size about 60, just to make it easier for you guys to see my thumbnails over there. We're going to start off by creating a rounded rectangle. Now I'm going to select my rectangle tool, click and hold, and grab the rounded rectangle tool, and I'm just going to click anywhere on my artboard. I'm going to make this 120 by 120 with a corner radius of about 20 pixels and let's see what that looks like. All right, that's not bad. But I'm thinking maybe a little smaller, so let's select it and deselect it and go with my original 100 by 100 here as it is set. 100 by 100 with a 20 pixel corner radius. Perfect. Now I want to get rid of this stroke, so I'm just going to make sure I have this selected. Come up here to my color panel, select the stroke and just hit the slash button. Okay, I've gotten rid of that. I'm going to select the fill again, and I'm going to come down to my gradient panel, and I'm just going to click on the gradient swatch. You can see it's going to fill it with that black to white gradient. I want to set this to 90 degrees, so we've got the black at the top, white on the bottom, and I want to change these colors. So I'm going to double click on this gradient stop here. You can see it gives me either my color picker, or it also allows me to use my color panel up here. I'm going to use my color picker, and I'm just going to choose this very light blue here. And now I'm going to click away and double click my darker swatch, and instead of using my color panel, I'm going to come up here to my my color panel, not my color picker, excuse me, my color panel. I'm going to come up to my color panel, I'm going to hit the flyout menu and select HSB, and I'm going to just choose a dark blue in here, like that. I'm going to darken it up a little more, maybe desaturate just a hair more, like that. All right, I'm going to actually leave the color panel out here so we can use it easily later on. And actually, as I look at this, I might want to select this light blue and just make it a little bit lighter. Maybe shift that more toward the teal end of things. Nice and bright down there on the bottom. There we go. Now we're going to make sure we have this rounded rectangle selected and go up to Effect, Stylize, and choose Inner Glow. Now we're going to set the mode to normal. We're going to make this a very dark blue. So I'm just going to click into the blues here on the hue slider and just choose a very dark blue, something like that down there. And I'm going to set the opacity to 75. Matter of fact, I'm going to tap the preview button here so we can see what's going on. And we're going to blur it about 20. Let's see what that looks like. And let's try 25. Let's go 25. And now I want the blur to pretty well disappear under or above the lighter area of my gradient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to mode and set that to overlay. You can see how really the only thing that's there is the shadow over the top part of our button. So we're going to hit OK. Now for our icon here, we want to apply a nice inner glow over the entire thing now that we've kind of set the stage for our underlying color. So what I want to do is make sure I have this selected and I'm going to go Commander Control C to copy it, Commander Control F to paste it in front, but that also pasted it in place. If I open up my layer, you can see I now have two copies of the same exact path. I want to select this path on top and just fill it with white. Okay, you can see I've got the foreground selected in my color panel. Just choose white and there we go. Next, I'm going to go to my appearance panel and you can see I still have an inner glow there. So I'm going to double click on inner glow. Now, if your appearance panel is not open, by the way, you can go window. Oh, there we go, window. 
uh, appearance. But I want to make sure I have that selected and just double click on my inner glow there. And we want to start changing things here. Number one, we want to set this guy back to normal. Okay, we're going to preview him. We're going to set the color to black and the opacity to 100. And maybe we'll give it a 30 pixel blur, just a little bit more. Yeah, like that. That's perfect. And we're going to hit OK. Now we're going to, I'm going to close my appearance panel up. Now I'm going to make sure I just have this path selected. Okay, select it. Actually click the little circle in the layers panel, just like that. Come to the transparency panel, and we're going to set this guy to soft light. You can see we now have that overlaying the entire thing. You can see there's a difference with and without. So with, that's a little too strong for my liking, so I'm going to select that, and I'm just going to reduce that opacity to 60%. There we go. Perfect. Next up is that sort of vortex, you know, everything racing toward the middle, streaky line effect. And this is something that's pretty cool. I'm actually going to create this. I'm just going to move over here real quick. I'm going to create this using the line tool. So I'm going to select the line tool and just make sure that I don't have a fill and my stroke is set to black. Because you can see when I create one line, I just want it to come out as a black line. Perfect. Now, this is a very random effect. So I'm going to grab the line tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click from what would be the center of my vortex. Everything is rushing toward this point. Click and just pull straight up. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight or anything, just straight up. And what you want to do now is hold the tilde key. And the tilde key is above the tab key and to the left of your one digit. It's sort of like this strange, you know, very flattened out, laying on its side S. All right, you're going to hold that key down and just click and drag in an approximate circle and then let go. And you can see what's happened is I've created this very random effect of all these lines just sort of converging on this one center point. Very nice. Now these are all, again, set to black and the stroke size is 1. Okay, next up, we're going to deselect this guy. And I'm going to grab over here, I have the warp tool. And if I click and hold on the warp tool, I have underneath that the pucker tool. I'm going to grab the pucker tool, but before I start using it, I'm going to double click it. I just want to make sure that my width here is set to 150 and my height is also set to 150. I'm going to hit OK. You can see I've got a nice pucker tool uh, brush size. I'm going to click right in the center of this and just click and drag, maybe move it around just a little bit and let go. You can see it start of, sort of started to mix up those lines a bit. Now I'm going to double click on my pucker tool again and I'm going to make it about 300 by 300 and uh, that's a little bit too big so I'm going to downsize that to about 200 by 200 hit OK and I'm going to click and hold again just moving around ever so slightly and now I'm going to set it to about 250 by 250 and click and just really mix it up a bit to really make it look like these lines are just sort of streaking in from all over the place. Now, maybe one is a little bit too big for a stroke size, so all I have to do is come over here to the stroke area and set this to maybe half of that. All right, perfect. Now, let's select all of these lines and go Object, Expand. And we want to expand these from a stroke to a fill. So I'm just going to uncheck Fill and just Stroke, hit OK. So this is now a black fill. You can see black is now the fill. And now that we've, done, that we've done this, I just want to copy this, Command or Control C, and then Command or Control F to paste it right on top in place. And I'm just going to grab this tangent, or this uh, anchor handle, excuse me, not tangent handle, and I'm just going to drag to the side just a little bit just so we have twice as many lines there. Now, I'm not going to deselect. It's very important that you don't deselect at this point. I want to change these guys from being filled with black to being filled with white. There we go. I can now grab this entire thing and group it. So I can select it, object, group. Note the hotkey, control G on a Mac, that would be command G. And there we go. We now have this sort of grouped vortex looking effect. So now let's apply it to our icon. We need to not only drag it over our icon, which I'm going to do right now, just place it about like that. Maybe resize it, make it a bit smaller, like so. We also want to make sure we have it masked to this uh, rounded rectangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that rounded rectangle. Remember we set this guy to soft delight before and 60% opacity. I'm going to select him and I'm going to copy him. Now I'm going to select my group with all of my vortex lines, this group right here. I'm going to double click in the open area in the transparency panel next to my little thumbnail to apply a mask. And I'm just going to hit Command or Control F to paste that rounded rectangle right in place. Now I have that rounded rectangle selected and we can notice it is still on soft light. I want to set it back to normal and the opacity to 100. 
essentially what's happening here is we are masking this not only to the rounded rectangle, but we're also making sure it fades off nicely at all the edges. I want it to fade off a little more at the edges, so I'm going to select that guy and I'm going to open my appearance panel. I'm going to double click on my inner glow and I'm going to set my blur to be a little bit bigger, maybe something more like 40. Let's preview that and see what that looks like. Well, 40 is a little too much. Let's try 30. 35, excuse me. 35. There we go. 35 looks good. Let's double click on the color and just make sure we do have as black as we can get. All right. Very, very nice. There we go. We have now masked our vortex or our burst effect to the rounded rectangle and faded the edges off nicely. So I'm going to select this thumbnail right here in the transparency panel to get me back out to my normal editing mode. And what I want to do with this group that has now been masked is just set it to overlay. So I'm going to choose overlay. And I might even want to, yeah, I want to reduce the opacity a little more than that. So let's take the opacity down to maybe 45. Let's check to see what that looks like. Uh, maybe a little more than that just for the sake of being able to see it. Let's take it up to 55. And 55 looks about what I want. Okay, next up we want to grab our ellipse tool right here, ellipse tool, and just draw a circle or a very flat oval across the middle of our icon like so and fill this with a very bright blue. Sort of like that, that's perfect. Next we're going to go Effect Blur, Gaussian Blur. And we're going to blur this well, somewhere between 5 and 7 pixels. Let's go with 7 just because that's the most blurred. Whoop. I'm just going to choose my regular selection tool and select away. And you can see that it just sort of adds a, a little feeling of depth to our icon. If you like, you can choose it and just reduce the opacity a little bit, which I'm going to do maybe bring it down to 75. There we go, very nice. Next up, we want to grab that ellipse tool again, and this time draw a big circle like this, which is going to end up being our shine, the shine across the top of our icon, just like that. I'm going to fill it just with white. And I'm going to mask this to our icon, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this rounded path. Again, this is the one set to soft light and 60% opacity. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to come up to our shine, which is this guy right here. I'm going to double click to create that mask in the transparency palette. Command and control F to paste in place. And I'm going to set this guy to normal and opacity is going to be 100. Now I want to simply click on this inner glow. Now here we're in the appearance panel. I just want to grab that inner glow and drag it to the garbage just like that. Next I'm going to select my thumbnail to get back out to my actual shine, my ellipse, the white ellipse which has been masked to this icon. And I just want to reduce the opacity to something like 40. Okay, you can see there's a nice shine, maybe even a little less than that. Let's take it down to 35. There we go. Now before we add our little icon within this icon, first thing I want to do before we do that is just select the absolute lowest shape, which is this rounded rectangle with the blue. And I just want to throw a subtle drop shadow underneath it. So I'm going to go Effect, Stylize Drop Shadow. And I'm going to preview this and we're just going to kind of go with whatever looks good. We're going to X offset it by one and Y offset it by one. Blur it maybe three pixels max and reduce the opacity to something like 20. And mode, we're going to set that to normal. So we're going to hit OK and a very subtle drop shadow underneath our shape. So the next thing we want to do is apply our icon. Now when we apply this icon, we want to make sure that we drag it underneath our shine layer here. So the shine appears to be across anything that is inside this icon. Hence making whatever it is look like it's you know encapsulated within this rounded rectangle, this sort of you know gel 3D icon. So what I want to do first to get this started is grab my ellipse tool and I have my fill color set to white and I'm just going to drag out a circle right into this icon. Maybe make it about that big. Now that I've created one circle, before I drag that underneath my shine, I just want to select it, copy it, Command or Control C, Command or Control F to paste it right on top. And now I'm going to hold down my Shift and Alt key. If you're using a Mac, that would be Shift and Option. I'm just going to drag it in a little bit just so I now have two circles. You can see if I make this one black, you can see I have two circles, one black, one white. I'm going to click one, Shift click the other one. So now I've got both of them selected. And I'm going to go Window, Pathfinder. Here's my Pathfinder panel. I'm going to select this, this icon right here, Shape Modes, and it's Subtract from the shape right here. So it punches a hole right in the middle of our circle. So now we have that very thin donut. And I also, I'm going to bring up Bridge here, and I'm going to grab this AI file right here, Jake's Head. I'm going to drag it right in. I'm going to minimize Bridge. And you can see what I've got, Jake's Head right here. I am going to embed it. And I'm going to come all the way in here. Now there's going to be several groups. All the way in until I just get the path right here, which is his head. And I'm going to cut that. Command or Control X. 
and I'm gonna delete this entire series of groups. Just delete it just like that. So now we just have our compound shape, and I'm going to paste Commander Control V that head. I'm going to size it way down so it fits in the middle of our circle here, like so, and I'm going to fill it with white. There we go. So now we sort of have our icon sitting in there. Now the next thing I want to do is just select both of these guys, Command or Control G to group them and drag them beneath that shine. Now we can do this a number of ways. I'm just going to go Object, Arrange, Send Backward. And you can see it just knocks it right below our shine. Now it is right here in the Layers panel. So we're going to also apply a subtle drop shadow to this. So I'm going to go Effect, Drop Shadow, and you know what, actually? I can just go Effect, Apply Drop Shadow, which is going to apply the last used drop shadow settings because that's a nice, subtle drop shadow. Now, that is one way to create that icon. You could stop there. I'm actually going to duplicate it. Hold down my Alt key and just drag a copy of it right over. Now, well, before I do anything else, I'm going to select this and just Command or Control G to group it just so we don't accidentally select one element and move it. So that's one way to do it. Now, if you want to make it look more like the actual icon, just to follow this quick step. The first thing we want to do is just select the icon within the icon, his head and the circle going around it. And I just want to dump the drop shadow. So here in the appearance panel, I'm just going to click that drop shadow, drag it to the garbage can. Perfect. Next thing I'm going to do is copy it, Commander Control C, and then paste it right in front, Commander Control F. And there we go. We now have two of the same exact group right here. I'm going to shut the guy in front off, so I'm going to shut him off. So now we only have one group on, and I'm going to grab my rectangle tool. I'm just going to fill it with, oh, I don't know, red. Whoop, we don't want to fill that group with red. We want to make sure we deselect that like that. Grab the rectangle tool and set red as our foreground color, and just draw a red square over the entire icon, just like that. Now we want to drag this red square in between both of our groups. So I'm just going to click it, and whoop, that's the wrong path. Let me close up my appearance panel and my color guide here so we can see more of our layers. Right here, I want to drag this red path in between my layer that's shut off and my layer that's on, which is beneath it now. Okay, So we're going to turn that original layer back on, the, the icon with the circle going around it and the head within it. I'm going to select that and hold down my shift key and select the red square. And I'm going to go back to my Pathfinder panel again and choose that, that icon that we did before, second from the left shape mode, the one that punches the hole right in the middle of it. Now it looks like we haven't done anything, but that's actually because we have this group on underneath which is just filling in the hole we just cut out. See, so yeah, I shut that group off and it looks like we've just cut a nice hole right through this. Now I'm going to set the color of this square to black. And I'm going, you know what, actually, yeah, I'm going to set it to black. And I'm going to turn the group on underneath it. So there's the group just filling in the hole we cut out. Now what we need to do with this black group is apply a drop shadow to it. So I'm going to come up here to Effect, Drop Shadow. And we're going to hit Preview. And I only want this to be blurred about 1. I want the opacity to be about 55. Let's try 55. I think that'll be good for us. And X Offset's going to be 2. So blur, maybe I don't want to blur it at all. Maybe we just want it to be over there, and we'll reduce the opacity a little more. And let's hit OK and see what that looks like. Well, use our regular selection tool, deselect it, and that looks pretty good. Now what we need to do is get rid of all this black, so we just need to mask this shape using this group right underneath. So I'm going to grab this group, Command or Control C to copy, select the black shape, double click in the transparency panel in that blank area to create the mask, and just hit Command or Control F. You can see that only will allow the drop shadow portion of that black shape to show. I'm going to select the other or the left hand thumbnail in the transparency panel. And there you have it. We have an icon that is much more like the one you see in the iPhone. It's got the shadow and everything right there within the icon. Now, a couple things that are uh, cool to know about this icon. Basically, we've finished creating it right now. But if you want to come in here and change the color, it's very, very easy. You just select this lowest shape. Go to the gradient panel, and you can edit the gradient. Double click on that gradient. Let's say we want to make it red. Okay, so I'll choose this red here for the bottom. Click away, double click this guy over here. And if it were fully on screen, you could see I'm choosing a darker red, like so. Uh, maybe we want to make it a little bit darker, so we can come here to the color panel. I'm just darkening it up nicely. Next, we just want to come to the appearance panel and change that inner glow. Maybe make it a very dark red. And last but not least, Select this circle in the center and just make it red. Maybe make it a bit brighter than it is now. And there you go. You've transformed the icon from being blue to being red. 
And that's it. That is how you create an iPhone style icon in Adobe Illustrator. You can now take this icon and use it in any other application. And remember, because it's vector, it is fully scalable up and down uh, with no restrictions as far as that's concerned. So that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. Please go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. Thanks for watching.